Hey folks, welcome back. This is going to be part two of us exploring ZigSim Pro on iOS. Now, if you watched last week's part one, we did a lot of cool stuff like bringing in gyroscopes, accelerometers, and all these different sensors. And today we're going to go a little bit deeper on showing you how you can use the NDI depth map to do some really cool displacement effects and how you can get some of that data from the AR kit, which is pretty cool, and get that controlling elements in Touch Designer. So on the right side of my screen, I have got Touch Designer open. On the left side over here, I've got the screen mirroring from my iPhone. So I'm going to go ahead and open ZigSim Pro up. And I highly recommend taking a look at last week's session because I showed you how to set up all the settings. My settings are already set up and ready to go. So the first thing we're going to do is start with NDI because we looked at it a little bit last time and we looked at how the depth map was embedded in the alpha channel. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the little arrow next to NDI so I can get into its settings. Make sure that I have my image type set to both here. I'm going to want the front camera in this case for my example. And I'm going to keep the resolution at HD because I think that's more than enough. So I can hit back now. I'm going to go ahead and click on NDI so I see a little check mark next to it. And then I can go ahead and hit start here. Now when I hit start, I'm going to see ZigSim telling me that it's doing stuff. And a handy little feature is in the top right corner here, you'll see a little camera icon. And that's nice because what it'll do is actually give you a little preview of what you're going to see coming through that NDI feed. So in this case, I can turn this off because what I'm going to do in Touch Designer is actually drop an NDI in top here. And I'm going to go to the source name and I'm going to find, or I'm going to wait for ZigSim Pro to pop up. And then I'm going to go ahead and select my iPhone ZigSim Pro here. And we'll see that I appear on that screen. Now we can also see just like we saw before the alpha situation happening here. Now if you are seeing some lag like you are in my situation, make sure you're checking out your Wi-Fi settings. I'm using the Wi-Fi with a bunch of other people in my home right now. So that's why you're going to see a little bit of lag on this stream. And that's why a lot of times you'll see professionals recommend using hard lines and Ethernet cables when you're working on permanent installations. Just because things like this can happen if there are other people using the Wi-Fi. Now, Wi-Fi stuff aside, what we noticed last time is if we activate the viewer and click A on the keyboard, we can see that depth map inside of the alpha channel. Now, if you've also seen a recent video where I talk about some of the operators that I use a lot, Channel Mix was one of them. And in that video, we talked about how to take something that was a color image with maybe a blank background and turn that into an alpha map. Now we're going to do the opposite. We're going to take our alpha and we're going to stuff the alpha channel into the RGB channels. So this is really cool. A little trick you can do here. I'm going to actually turn off the alpha preview on my viewer here. And I'm going to go and create a channel mix top. I want to plug my NDI top into the channel mix. And if you remember, these are the input and output matrix is how you can imagine it here. So what I'm going to do is take the alpha channel, which is this kind of area on the right, and I'm going to output the alpha channel into the RGB channels. And then I'm actually going to zero out the RGB channels. So that way, now when I'm looking at it, I'm going to have a black and white gradient map that's going to correspond to my alpha channels. So this is super useful because what I can then do is maybe do something like create a grid SOP. And I'm going to set this grid SOP to the resolution that I have here, which is 1280 by 720. Now, one common thing I see a lot of people do by accident is because you say 1280 by 720, you come to the grid SOP and you put rows 1280 column 720. But that's actually backwards because when you think about it, if you think about what 1280 is, it's the number of pixels from left to right. So actually that translates to the columns inside of a grid. So I'm going to set my columns to 1280 and my rows to 720. Now, the final thing I'm going to do here is set the size to be 1.77 to 1. And that's only because I want to match my aspect ratio of my incoming video texture. Now, if you are working on a weaker machine, maybe an older laptop or something without a strong GPU, by all means, feel free to take these numbers and divide them by 2, 3, 4, 5. Really doesn't matter. You'll lose a little bit of resolution around the edges, but you'll still totally be able to do what we're doing here. Just make sure you divide both of them by the same number. So if you do 720 divided by 2, make sure you do 1280 divided by 2 as well. 
Now I'm going to right click on the output of this grid, go to my comps and create a geometry comp because we're going to use a great trick and touch designer where we can apply this displacement fully as a GPU accelerated effect using a Fong material. So I'm going to grab my mats, I'm going to create a Fong and I'm going to go to my Geo 1 here to the render page and drag and drop Fong 1 onto my material. So far, so good. So now comes the fun bits. So first, my Fong, I'm going to assign a color map here. So I'm actually just going to make a null top, connect my NDI to it, and I'll give this a name color, and I can drag and drop this onto the color map. So far, so good. Now I need a normal map. Now there's a really great operator inside a touch designer called the normal map top which can calculate some normals for you just based on live video and textures coming in. And in most cases, I find you don't actually really need to change any of the parameters if you're just doing some generic stuff like this. So I'm gonna take that normal and drop it onto the normal map. Then I'm gonna turn on enable height map. And now what I can do is with this channel mix, I can grab this, drop it onto the height map and turn on displace vertices. Now, once I do that, immediately you're going to start seeing some crazy stuff out of the geometry viewer here. I'll activate it and I'll start to rotate around it. And you can see that now my depth map is totally displacing that grid. Now, like I said last time, this might not be the kind of thing you want to do 3D scans with because you can see even around, you know, my head, there's not a ton of resolution. Uh, but if you are doing something fun, a quick little 3D scan for, for fun, or if you're using this in some kind of 3D context of having particles emitting from the person, these kind of things are totally things you can do with it. Now, once you get to this point, really from here, you can dial it in however you want. So for example, you can do cool stuff like go to the Fong material, go to the common page, and turn it on to wireframe mode. And now you can see we have, although it's very dense here, this is actually a wireframe. So if we actually went back and let's make this less dense, let's make this 720 divided by 2 and 1280 divided by 2. That wireframe is going to start to become more and more apparent. So we can even make it even lower resolution. Let's do divided by 4 and 1280 divided by 4. Now you can see I'm becoming more and more of a wireframe individual. So there's lots of cool stuff you can do with this, but just knowing that you can pull out the color, create a normal map from it, and then create this black and white ramped texture that you can use as a height map, super easy to do at home. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you today was a couple of ways that you could use some of the data coming from the AR kit side of things. So what I'm gonna do is back on the Zigsim Pro app, I'm gonna go to sensor in the bottom left, I'm gonna click on NDI to turn it off, and what I'm going to do is go to the settings of AR kit by clicking on this little arrow. And here you can decide what you actually want AR kit to track and what kind of information you want coming back to you. In this case, I just want face information. So I'm going to say tracking type face feature points on or off. Now, the last thing I have to do once I have these set up is go back and then click on AR kit so that it turns on the little check mark to let me know it's activated. Now I can click start at the bottom. And we're going to see a lot of interesting kinds of data points here. Now, one of the cool things we can do with this is if we actually click on the camera in the top right here, get the little preview, we can see the face mesh that the AR kit is creating. Now, at the moment, it is pretty difficult to get this mesh over into Touch Designer just because a lot of the things that you're seeing happening on the screen are things built into AR kit and not specific data points that we have access to. But it is pretty cool to look at it and see how far technology's come where my iPhone just straight up looking at me through the camera can create this really high fidelity mesh. Now, what can we do with Touch Designer in this case? Well, I'm going to turn off this little preview and I'm going to set my phone down here on the table. And I'm going to go ahead and create an OSC in chop. And I'm going to go ahead and delete that old example because we don't need that anymore. And in my OSC chop, I'm going to set the network port that I set in the settings. And now I've got a bunch of channels coming in. You can see I have things like face position, rotation, 
uh, different directions of my gaze, and I think we covered some of these last time. So how could we use some of these? So let's say, for example, I had five movie players. So I'll make a movie file in top, and I'll change this to be maybe a nature footage. I'll make the next one to be maybe count.mov, and then I'll make a couple more nature footages here. So I've got five pieces of media. I'm gonna plug them into a switch top. And you're gonna see it's really easy to use these channels as long as you have your foundational skills of how to use chops. So for example, I can see that there are some channels here that are called, let's see, blink left and blink right. And you can see every time I blink, those channels go from zero to one. So let me put a select chop after my OSC in. And I'm gonna use the channel name drop down selector on the right side here. And I'm gonna look for blink left. So we got the ZigSim, the device ID, face eye blink left, and I'm gonna grab face eye blink right. So now I have these two channels. And if I do something that I always do, which is use trail chop to monitor channels, I can see that if I look at the iPhone camera and blink, I get pretty clear triggers from that. Now I can also see that it's, it's detecting the amount of blink and that's why we have this kind of ramping effect here. And I want to turn this into a solid zero to one on and off trigger. So I'm going to lean on my good friend logic chop. I'm going to plug in my select into the logic. And on the logic chop, I'm going to use what I really like to do, which is convert input and I'm gonna say off when outside of bounds. And what this allows me to do is set a trigger related to the value of that incoming channel. So in this case, I can see that most of the time, if I blink, as long as I get above you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, I'm pretty confident that that's a blink. But maybe if it's only you know, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, I don't want that to trigger. So I can go to my logic chop and set my lower boundary to be 0 0.6 and my upper boundary I can leave at one because I can see these channels never really go beyond one. Now what I can do is connect this also to my trail and we can compare the differences where we can see, you know, there's a lot of ramp, there's a lot of noise inside of this kind of original channel. If I do something like squint, you can see it kind of builds up, but it never, really triggers until I do a full on blink. And then you can see the two bottom channels are the channels coming out of the logic chop. And whenever I blink, very clean, sharp zero to one signal goes on and off. So that's great. But what if I wanted to take both of these and just combine them into a singular blink channel? So I can do, again, leaning on the logic chop. And you'll see logic chop is a very helpful chop that a lot of people use very often. So right now I have two channels and what I want to have happen is when either of them go off, I want a zero to one trigger. I don't really need to differentiate between left eye and right eye. Now we have a nice combine channels option here and we can set this to or. And what this is gonna do is a logical or where if channel one or channel two go from zero to one, it's going to give me a zero to one trigger. Doesn't matter which one, as long as one of them is on, I'll get an on trigger from the output. So we can see if I do a left blink, I get a trigger. Right blink gives me a trigger. And obviously both eyes give me a trigger. Now all I have to do is plug that into maybe something like a count chop. And I know I have five movies that I have to change between. So I'm gonna have a range from zero to four. So I can say loop from zero to four connect a null chop after that, and use that value as the reference in my switch tops index. And now we can see every time I blink, changes the movie. Something as simple as pointing my iPhone on my face, grabbing a couple channels out of ZigSim, I can do something like change movies based on blinking. 
Now I can take this even further and the process you're going to use is going to be very similar for all these. So for example, I'll make a select chop, connect my OSC in to the select, look for a different channel I can grab here. So maybe in this case, I'll do something like face jaw open. And what we can see is this is essentially how open my face is. And if I open my face all the way as much as possible, I get a value closer to one. And if I close my mouth, I get a value of closer to zero. So this is great. You know, you can rearrange this however you want. You can add a little filter to it, or you can just grab that channel as it is. And let's say I want to use this as the speed of the movies. So I can go here, drag and drop these onto the speed parameters on each one of the movies. And now not only does my blinking change the movie, but how open my mouth is changes the speed. So you could go on for days and days, and I'm not saying this is the most creative use of these channels, but it's just to show you an example of how easy it is to pull some of this AR kit data out. And you can see there's a lot of stuff in here that's, that's actually really interesting because if you remember how excited folks were when Connect 2 had some face tracking built into it and Connect 1 had some face tracking built into it, but it was always kind of a little bit finicky and never really worked quite as well as we wished. And there just wasn't that many channels, but you can see this has everything from face tongue out. So if I put my tongue out, I get a zero to one channel. I've got cheek puffing. I've got the gaze direction, which side of my mouth is smiling. And there's a lot and lot of rich information that you can use here. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you take a look at ZigSim Pro. It's a very cool app. And as you can see, it's really easy to get a lot of data out of all the really cool sensors in an iPhone. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning touch designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.